Well, as we've already talked about, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, but it's also Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And did you know, every nine seconds in the U.S., a woman is assaulted or beaten. Domestic violence is the leading cause of injury to women more than car accidents, muggings, and rapes combined. And studies suggest that up to 10 million children witness some form of domestic violence annually. And nearly one in five teenage girls who have been in a relationship said a boyfriend threatened violence or self-harm if presented with a breakup. So the question is, what do you do? Well, my Comico County Sheriff Mike Lewis is with us this afternoon to help answer that question. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate my you pleasure. Here. When, uh, we know that you guys get called out on, on domestic violence calls. How difficult is it to respond to something like that? It's very difficult, Jimmy, because we, uh, we respond 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's not uh, just in the evenings. It's not in the middle of the night. It's in the middle of the day. And uh, we have to have discretionary power, whether to make an arrest or uh, handle the situation a little bit differently. And every situation is different. We interview uh, those who are victims of domestic violence, and uh, sometimes they want an arrest to be made, sometimes they do not. But a state law was passed years ago, if there are obvious signs of injury involving domestic partners, we have to make an arrest. Uh. Mm -hmm. And we take that discretion away from the victim, which is good, because oftentimes the victim will suffer additional consequences yeah. um, if they authorize or, or want an arrest to be made. So. We, we do that now. Now sometimes uh, victims put, take out a protective order. That's uh, something that keeps their uh, attacker away from them. Do they always work? They don't always work. They're not 100% guarantee, but I can tell you they certainly reduce the number of injuries to an individual. So I strongly recommend those who are, are fearful of additional uh, injury to get a protective order. I helped guide someone through a protective order this past Saturday um, from home. And uh, it's very important. Protective orders do reduce injuries and do reduce additional violence to victims. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not always the lady in the relationship that's the victim. Oh, no. It's, that, it's absolutely. 40% um, of uh, those involved in domestic violence, those who are actual victims, are males, which a lot of people don't understand that, but that's very true. Yeah. And what, what is the protective order? What is it designed to do? What's it supposed to accomplish? It's designed to keep the suspect away from the victim for a period of time. Um, that can be issued by a district court commissioner, can be issued by a district court judge. Uh, during uh, business hours, Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4.30, if someone wants to make application uh, for a protective order or a peace order. Protective orders are involved in any type of domestic situation. A peace order could be someone who's not involved in a domestic relationship and uh, they want to keep someone away from them. So there is a difference between a protective order and a peace order. Either way, it keeps someone away from you for a period of time. And if they violate that order, they're going to be subject to arrest for contempt of court. But if they're going to get an order uh, Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4.30, they can go to the district court. If it's after hours, after 4.30, or on a weekend, they can go to a district court commissioner, which is located off of Naylor Mill Road behind the Wicomico County Sheriff's Office. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I know a lot of people enter into a relationship and they probably, they never imagine that something like this could happen mm -hmm. to them, that they could be a victim of domestic violence. What do you suggest f to someone who is surprised by that, who finds themselves in that situation they ima never imagined? Well, again, there are no guarantees, but if someone finds himself in a domestic violence situation, uh, they need to uh, seek help. They need to notify friends, family, colleagues, things they can do. Stay out of rooms where weapons are kept, such mm -hmm. as a kitchen. Make sure you have a room where you can get out. There is an exit. Don't confine yourself to a bathroom. A lot of people want to go into the bathroom. Well, bathrooms always have small windows if they have any windows at all. But stay out of the kitchen, that's where all the knives are, that's where the weapons are. Yeah. Notify your family, your friends, your colleagues, your coworkers of a code word, something that you can say to them, they'll know right away, you need help. Right. You do need some help. So th there are ways to uh, obviously notify people that you do want help and you do need help. So if somebody leaves uh, a, a violent situation, a violent relationship, they could consider themselves protected, right? Taking Absolutely. Care of Again, Jimmy, there are no guarantees. There certainly are no guarantees. We see that all the time but there are ways to get out of these relationships and, and I strongly encourage anybody who's a victim of domestic violence to notify law enforcement, get it documented, mm -hmm. maintain all text messages, messages that are left on your phone, make sure they do that and, and you need to document all of that. Right. And, and then of course I'm, I guess I start to say obvious things like change your number and your locks. And things Trust like me, that. they will need that in the long run. If they document and maintain all text messages, any messages left on a cell phone, they need to keep track of all of that and right. maintain that. Uh, Sheriff, if you have one message to uh, put out there for anybody who may be in a situation like this, what is it? There is help. 
there are resources out there, Lisa. Notify the Wicomico County Sheriff's Office or any law enforcement agency in your jurisdiction. But please notify your friends, your families, and your colleagues. Let them know what's going on uh, because you never know uh, that person may be your best witness. All right, and of course you're talking Wicomico County. This is across anywhere, the board. Anywhere. It anywhere. certainly is across the board, yeah. absolutely. Right. Sheriff Mike Lewis, thank you very much. No, a lot thank of you, very James. good information thank there, you, Lisa. which we're also going to share on our website as well. In case you missed some of that, there's there's great details there. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. And from staying safe to staying healthy, so many medical plans, so many questions. Up next on Delmarva Life, the experts are here to clear up some of the confusion. And where you can go if you still need some help sorting it all out. But first, trying to wean yourself or maybe your teenager off energy drinks? Well, here's Dr. Oz with a few ideas. Hi, I'm Dr. Oz. Is your teen hooked on energy drinks? Reports show that too many of these high-octane beverages may pose major health risks in teens. Get them hooked instead on iced tea without sugar, seltzer cut with a little OJ, or an energy-boosting smoothie made with fresh fruit and low-fat yogurt. 